Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a drama film. Memories of Mazuko. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with Sean and his girlfriend in a bar. His girlfriend ends their relationship because she feels her life with him is meaningless. Devastated, Sean indulges himself with alcohol and explicit adult movies to hide his broken heart. The following day, Sean wakes up from the sight of his father. He visits Sean's cramped apartment with a box of Mazuko's ashes. He tells Sean that Mazuko was his older sister, Sean's aunt, who unfortunately was found dead in a park three days ago. Sean has never met Mazuko before, but his father instructs him to clean her apartment located in a different town. According to the police, 53-year-old Mazuko was found dead near the riverbank on July 10, 2001. The police concluded that the murderer beat her to death. Three days later, Sean follows his father's instructions. He arrives at Mazuko's dirty and trashed apartment and cleans up the place. While cleaning, he gathers information about his aunt Mazuko. He discovers her old bag, a wacky old photograph, scribbles on the wall, and teen idols posters. Mazuko's neighbor intervenes in his cleaning and describes Mazuko as a pest in the neighborhood because she always screamed loudly. Sean continues his chore. Outside the window, he sees three suited men standing near a limousine. Unexpectedly, a detective arrives in Mazuko's apartment and asks them if they've seen the man with the Pandora hat. He informs them that the man used to live with Mazuko 18 years ago, but was imprisoned. The man was released from prison a month ago and vanished. Afterward, the detective interviews Sean to see if he knows any information about Mazuko. However, even her mere existence is unknown to Sean until now. Sean starts wondering about Mazuko's identity, and the detective gives him the beginning of the memories of Mazuko. In 1971, Mazuko was 23. She was a beautiful and talented high school music teacher in Akala. However, one unfortunate day, an incident occurred in the school. A student nicknamed Playboy was suspected of theft during a school trip to an inn. The faculty and vice principal asked Mazuko to talk with her student. Mazuko confronted Playboy if he stole the money, but he didn't talk. To solve the situation, she used her own money and stole money from her colleague's wallet to pay for the missing cash. She visited the innkeeper and took the blame from Playboy. Mazuko then talked with the vice principal and confessed it was Playboy's fault. But sadly, the vice principal wished to hide the truth from others and insisted it was Mazuko's fault. He instead asked Mazuko to shove her chest to prove that she was sorry for taking the blame from Playboy. After the confrontation, her colleagues showed interest in her, so he asked her out for a dinner date, to which she accepted. During their date, Mazuko shared her childhood with her colleague. Mazuko was seven, and their father always favored her sister because of her chronic illness. Then one day, after visiting the sister in the hospital, the father brought Mazuko to a live performance show in the department store. She imitated the wacky face done by the performers, and it happened to bring laughter to their father. As she grew up, she made a wacky face to make their father laugh. However, Mazuko's efforts to gain attention from their father all went in vain, because her father still thought about her sick sister all the time. Mazuko returned home and recounted her date with her colleague to her sister. However, the father got mad at Mazuko for telling her date story because he thought Mazuko was making her sister jealous, knowing she wouldn't ever experience dating or family and life due to her illness. After hearing such uncalled reprimanding, Mazuko ran to her room, but her sister blocked her way. Mazuko shouted that she never felt any pity for her sister's sickness, and then ran away. The father's favoritism brought tension between Mazuko and her sister's relationship, which later ungrew worse. The following day, Mazuko arrived at school, and the principal found out that she stole another teacher's money to pay the innkeeper. But Mazuko explained it was all a misunderstanding and told the principal to get Playboy to admit the truth. So Mazuko visited Playboy and begged him to admit his fault in front of the principal and the vice principal, which he accepted. Mazuko brought Playboy inside the principal's office and expected him to admit the truth. However, Playboy betrayed Mazuko and lied that he never stole anything. Due to this, the school terminated Mazuko from teaching. Mazuko arrived home and packed her belongings so she could leave. His sister tried to stop her from leaving, but Mazuko pushed her away and hated her for everything. Mazuko left home and never came back again. Back in the present, Sean stares at his aunt's wacky photo, wondering if he has ever seen the face before. Mazuko's neighbor sits beside Sean and tells him that Mazuko used to cry in front of the riverbank. As they chat, the neighbor notices the man with the Pandora hat is sitting in the park's field. The neighbor runs for his life, while Sean chases after the man who quickly runs away and leaves a book behind on the ground. Sean looks at the book and realizes it's a Bible. Then afterward, the father calls Sean for an update on his chore. Sean shares information about his aunt, but his father doesn't care about it. He believes that Mazuko's life was meaningless, especially after she left home. Back in Mazuko's memory, Mazuko arranged a meetup with her brother to ask for money. The brother then guessed that Mazuko was living with a guy because of the bandage on her eye. Mazuko lied about being safe around her new boyfriend, despite being abusive to her. 
Mazuka then asked about her sister and her father, but her brother brushed her off and blamed her for destroying their family. So he asked her to never come back, because she was dead to them. Before he left, he told Mazuko that their father had died from a stroke three months after she left their house. Mazuko returned home with money from her brother. Upon arriving home, her boyfriend's rival, Takeo, visited her. Takeo conversed with Mazuko about her boyfriend's recent work, but her boyfriend suddenly arrived home and caught them talking. Takeo left the place, and the boyfriend beat up Mazuko again for talking to his enemy. He then asked if she already found a job as courtesan, and Mazuko gave him the money of her brother instead. That night, Mazuko received a suicide note from her boyfriend saying, Please forgive me for being born. Mazuko searched for her boyfriend under a rainstorm and found him standing on a railway. She witnessed the train run to her boyfriend, and his blood splattered all over the place. When her boyfriend died, Mazuko felt the world had ended. Six months later, Mazuko worked as a singer again. She also established a forbidden relationship with Takeo and slept together whenever they could. One night, Mazuko followed Takeo to his home, thus causing his wife to suspect Takeo of cheating. The following day, Takeo met with Mazuko to end their relationship because he was caught by his wife. Mazuko was confused because she thought he loved her, but Takeo clarified that he only used her to purge the hormone jealousy he felt against her boyfriend. Before Takeo left Mazuko for good, he complimented her body as beautiful. From Takeo's praise, Mazuko earned the nerve to finally apply as a courtesan and got hired. Not long after, Mazuko became rich and famous by selling her hormones. Unfortunately, seasons changed, and so did preferences. The customers are slowly accustomed to younger courtesans, leaving Mazuko with nothing to work on. The parlor she worked for terminated her because no customers wanted her aging hormones anymore. After losing her job, Mazuko visited her hometown and read her father's diary. Every entry of his diary ended with no news from Mazuko. She cried at the sight of her father's words when suddenly her sister found her. The sister embraced her, but Mazuko only pushed her away. Mazuko left money for her brother and ran to her car to escape from her sister. In 1974, Mazuko was 26 when she murdered a customer for not paying for her hormone services. After the murder, Mazuko tried to jump off the building to end her miserable life, but her hand instinctively grabbed the balcony's baluster. Even though she wished her life to end, her body still wanted to live. Back in the present, Sean wakes up late at night after dreaming about Mazuko talking to him. Then he listens to his ex-girlfriend's voice message on the telephone, informing him that she's joining the Japan Overseas Cooperation Volunteers to serve in Uzbekistan. Afterward, Sean returns to sleep, but only to dream about an adult film actress kidnapping him. At first, he thinks it's a dream until the actress slaps his face, and it turns out it's really happening. The actress's bodyguards carry him into the limousine, and the actress introduces herself as Mazuko's best friend, Megumi. Inside the limo, Megumi explains to Sean that she met Mazuko in prison. She describes Mazuko as someone unbothered, obedient, and unwavering. Back in Mazuko's memory, Mazuko retold her story during the interrogation with the police officer. After committing the crime, Mazuko rode the train to Tokyo. She planned to commit suicide to join her boyfriend in the afterlife. However, a passerby and a barber stopped her from killing herself. He invited her for a drink, where they got together and hung out, with their hormones turned on. The barber gave Mazuko a new hairstyle, and they later spent a steamy night together. The barber confessed his devotion to Mazuko and wished to spend their life together despite her grim past. However, Mazuko's little fairy tale turned upside down, because the police finally located her and separated her from the barber. Mazuko served eight years in prison. She spent her days inside, working out and attending the hairstyle vocational training. Afterwards, she later earned her license to work as a hairstylist. Mazuko eventually left prison after serving for years. She returned to the barber shop to reunite with the barber. However, upon her return, she found the barber had already built his new family. Back in the present, Megumi treats Sean in a restaurant. Afterward, Megumi resumes the story where she met Mazuko again, working as a hairstylist in a parlor shop. Reunited once again, Megumi and Mazuko always spent their time together. Mazuko even helped styling Megumi's hair for her debut as an adult film actress. After Megumi's debut, Mazuko comforted Megumi since joining such a nasty hormone industry was a different task. So to cope with such a transition, they later drink alcohol until night. Megumi wanted to continue drinking until Mazuko's birthday in her house. However, when they arrived at Megumi's house, Mazuko heard Megumi's husband on the panel board. Suddenly, Mazuko wanted to leave early. Back in the present, Sean explains to Megumi that his aunt Mestuko was jealous of her because she's married while Mazuko wasn't. Megumi then tells Sean that Mazuko wasn't alone because she had him as her family, who truly understands her. She then studies Sean and comments that Sean resembles his aunt Mazuko. Back in Mazuko's memories, Megumi confronted Mazuko after she quitted her job in the salon. However, upon her arrival at Mazuko's home, she saw Mazuko was living with another violent man. Megumi begged Mazuko to leave him, but Mazuko only defended the man and ended her friendship with Megumi instead. 
Megumi described Mazuko as beautiful when she confronted her that time, but when they met again 18 years later in the hospital, she hardly recognized her. Megumi tried talking with Mazuko, but she couldn't, and the only thing she could do was to give Mazuko her business card. After their quick reunion, Mazuko was found dead near the riverbank on the following day. Back in the present, Megumi drops Sean in Mazuko's apartment. Before they part, Megumi admits her only regret was not helping Mazuko enough until the end. Sean returns inside Mazuko's apartment after his meeting with Megumi. Suddenly, the man in the Pandora hat arrives and attacks Sean. The man demands for Sean's identity and his relationship with Mazuko. Sean introduces himself and explains that Mazuko is already dead. The man stops and introduces himself as Playboy, Mazuko's former student and live-in hormone partner. Upon hearing the sad news, Playboy blames himself, for he knows he's the reason for Mazuko's downfall in life. Back in Mazuko's memory, Playboy reunited with Mazuko. He brought her home in his car and admitted he stole the money from the inn. Mazuko then told Playboy everything that happened to her after she left the school. Guilt consumed Playboy and he apologized for destroying her life. He never knew why he did it, despite being deeply in love with her. At first, Mazuko debated if she was going to date Playboy after the hell he gave her. However, desperate not to be alone anymore, Mazuko forgave Playboy. Not long after, they began dating and moved in together. One day, Mazuko quitted her job in the salon and told Playboy not to return to his dangerous job anymore. However, Playboy only got mad and punched her in the face. Mazuko put up the Playboy's abusive side, as long as it meant that she wasn't alone in life. Until that day, Megumi confronted her about quitting the job in the salon. Mazuko met Megumi outside the apartment, while Playboy stayed indoors. He heard Mazuko defending his name, which led Playboy to regret being abusive toward her. Mazuko eventually accepted Playboy's job and joined his dangerous line of work. She earned money, delivered packages, exchanged transactions, and met dangerous to syndicate leaders from Playboy. Everything was well until Mazuko received a phone call from Playboy, telling her to quickly escape from their house. Mazuko met Playboy in a secluded hotel and found him covered in blood because he gambled the money of the syndicate and now they were searching for him. Mazuko then comforted Playboy that they were going to build a family together. Outside the hotel, the syndicates already surrounded them. To save Mazuko, Playboy called the police and lied about killing Mazuko. Later on, Playboy spent time in prison, regretting ruining Mazuko's life again, while Mazuko waited for years until Playboy left the prison. In 1988, Mazuko was 40 when Playboy was released from prison. Mazuko welcomed him with flowers, but Playboy only punched her and left her behind. Playboy then attended a church to understand what love was. Mazuko's compassion for him was overwhelming because he had never experienced love before. He learned in church that God is love, who was compassionate and forgiving. For Playboy, Mazuko was his god. Back in the present, Playboy surrenders to the police officers when they arrive in the park. They catch him, and Sean tells the detective that Playboy isn't the killer. The detective says he knows that information already, and they only catch him for interrogation. Besides, they had already captured the true killer. Afterward, Sean calls his father to inform him of the news about Mazuko's true killer. Sean then shares Megumi's comment about him resembling his aunt Mazuko. He regrets not meeting her for once in his life, when suddenly his father reveals that Sean met Mazuko before when he was still a toddler. Back in Mazuko's memory, Mazuko sat in front of the riverbank and showed her wacky face in front of little Sean. But her brother shielded the baby Sean and questioned what Mazuko was doing back in their town. So the brother brought Mazuko back to the train station. Before they parted away, the brother revealed that even though Mazuko abandoned her sister, the sister still thought of Mazuko until her dying breath. Upon arriving at the station, the brother told Mazuko never to return again. Back in the present, Sean adds that Mazuko used to cry in front of the river near her apartment. His father breaks into tears because of his regrets and mistreatment toward Mazuko. Back in Mazuko's memory in 1999, Mazuko was 51. She lived alone in a small apartment, never took out her trash, and became a fan of teen idols. She attended their concerts, bought their merchandise, and wrote a handful of letters for the members. She expected a reply from them, but she was disappointed when nothing arrived in her mail. Shortly, Mazuko lost control of herself and began visiting the psychiatric ward for her mental health maintenance. She also started scribbling on the wall the words, please forgive me for being born, and disrupting peace in the neighborhood. In 2001, Mazuko was 53 when the now-famous Megumi saw her in the hospital. Megumi chased after her to tell her that she needed a hair list, but Mazuko refused to talk with her. So Megumi only gave her the business card and left her alone. Near the riverbank, Mazuko tore Megumi's business card and returned home. That night, Mazuko imagined cutting her sister's hair, for it was her passion to style someone's hair. This ignited Mazuko's hope to pursue her passion again. She returned near the park to search for Megumi's business card, but a group of teenagers laughed at her. At first, she thought she managed to scare them away, but later on, the group of teenagers chased after her and beat her to death with a bat. The movie ends with Mazuko finally meeting her end. 
Her mind flashes her memories from the present to the past. Mazuko then climbs the staircase into heaven, and finally reunites with her sister, who's waiting for her on the top. The sister smiles at her, and welcomes her back finally. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.